One of the most amazing things about this storm, and oftentimes the reason why we hadn't heard much about this is so much of hurricane coverage usually is the buildup. We can see them coming. We spend days tracking them and analyzing where they're likely going to hit. We did not get that chance with Otis because it went through something called rapid intensification. Just a quick replay on this. We're going to watch what Otis did off the coast of Mexico. I'm going to stop this. This is yesterday in the morning at 9 a.m. It was just a tropical storm at that point. But in 12 hours, it intensified so fast that the wind speeds in the center of Otis increased 85 miles an hour in a 12 hour window. That's rapid intensification. It went from a tropical storm to a category five in 12 hours. That is a record for this part of the world. And there's really only been a small handful of hurricanes that have outdone it in terms of that fast of a rapid intensification. There was a study that came out last week, actually. This is so timely. A study came out last week that said because of global warming and the influence of climate change on our oceans, and the warmth from those oceans getting fed into these storms. We're now seeing twice as many hurricanes go through rapid intensification than we did in the 1900s. And here's an image which really tells the Otis story. This is put out from University of Miami. Take a look at the deep pool of red out here. This is showing you very warm sea surface temperatures right where Otis intensified. There were other things involved here. The upper level winds died down. That played a role. But there's a theme with the increasing number Numbers we're seeing of hurricanes go through this rapid intensification that ties back to this much bigger issue, which affects all of them, and that's the warmer oceans. And we've been talking about warm sea surface temperatures for a while. El Nino is part of it, but if you look at the globe, sea surface temperatures are well above average in many places. And to tie this back here at home, do you remember Hillary? Remember how we had a tropical storm hit LA and we thought that was weird? That storm went through rapid intensification before it happened. There's the track of Hillary. It was a major hurricane. But Hillary also increased its speed, 75 miles an hour in the center of it, in a 24-hour period. And look what Hillary traveled over right before it got to Southern California, a pool of much warmer than average sea surface temperatures. And that's when it went through rapid intensification. There was no time to put the brakes on it to allow that storm to disintegrate. That's why it was still a tropical storm when it hit Los Angeles. If you look at the global sea surface temperatures, you can visualize that we've got a lot of warm water out there. But here's the graph, which I think really tells the story. This is global average sea surface temperature going back. Every line gets uh, every year from 1980 gets a line. They're all down here except for this year, shattering the record this year for sea surface temperatures that are way above average. So this is having an impact on hurricanes, and I thought it was just so timely that just this week, Juliet, a study came out saying we're likely going to see this happening more often. Yeah, so Darren, you were talking about warmer oceans, but what exactly made them warmer and so much warmer this year? What, that year, right? The extreme. Yeah. I think that's the obvious question when you look at a graph like this. What is it about this year that made it so much different than every other year? The most direct answer for that is not only is this an El Nino year. We know that. We've been talking about that a lot. El Nino will raise the sea surface temperature a lot. But this is an El Nino, more importantly, that is coming after three years, which were the complete opposite. Three La Ninas in a row, the last three winters. That doesn't happen often. So it's almost like what's happening this year is a big rebound effect where all that warmth that had been stored in the uh, subsurface of the oceans during three La Ninas when it wasn't allowed to come to the surface, it's all coming out now at once. We're not going to stay this warm indefinitely for the next several years. But this is a sign global warming has pushed us to the point now where you can really do some extreme things. Juliet.